Hey guys, it's me, Kim. So, cultural appropriation honestly is not something that I really get upset about. I think most of our cultural appropriation conversations overlook the reality of cultural exchange and the way that culture and diaspora moves across the world, and it flattens that conversation in really unhelpful ways. And all this back and forth about white women wearing braids or whatever honestly feels like a waste of emotional energy to me because I don't even know if we're having the right discussions about it. Is it about the act or the ability to profit from the act? But if you want to get upset about Kim Kardashian wearing Fulani braids, I'm not going to step in. (laughs) Like, do you have at it? I do hope, though, that if we're going to stay on the cultural appropriation call-out train, that we're picking worthy fights. Because we might be at a point where our cultural appropriation panic is destructive. So there's this quote-unquote situation with Kendall Jenner last week that made me raise an eyebrow. It was reported that Kendall Jenner caused stir because of a look she wore in Vogue. Now, I have to say it was reported. I don't necessarily know if I saw a lot of outrage, but in these few articles I saw about people calling her out, there were tweets and Instagram comments. I mean, some people were mad at Kendall because of how her hair was styled in this shoot. Some people. It didn't really make it to my timeline, so that means it was pretty minor. But I know that it it definitely happened. And like, girl, come on now. Like, let's be real. Vogue, and to their credit, because of this minor blip, published a response because the worst thing to be in 2018 is sleep. You gotta be woke all the time, even if it's some bullshit. So here's what they said, quote, the image is meant to be an update of the romantic Edwardian Gibson girl hair, which suits the period feel of the Brock collection and also the big hair of the 60s and the early 70s, that puffed out, teased out look of those eras. We apologize if it came across differently than intended, and we certainly did not mean to offend anyone by it. You know, and honestly, shout out to Vogue. They obviously have some black people, people of color working there because that was a nice statement, but it was completely unnecessary. I wouldn't have really done this, but I'm sure that the editors over there were like, really? Like, get the fuck out of here. Because once you see the images and once you see the references, it's very clear that this is not appropriation. And this is where my concern and my annoyance really sets in because I do think a lot of appropriation claims are specious at best. We don't know what we don't know. Black folks aren't the only people on the planet to have ever had textured hair. And we have lots of influence on cultures around the world. I would never deny that. That's obvious. But we're not the only people who influence culture. And if your frame of reference is narrow, you can only draw conclusions from the stuff that you've seen. It's very easy for you to think that you came up with a thing or that your group is the only group to have ever done a thing. And when that's not the case, as it often is, you end up just wasting energy and time on a fight that is just foolish. And I don't want that for us. This whole thing with Kendall really reminded me of the Chola Browse moment with Rihanna on British Vogue when they unveiled her September issue. And so Rihanna was wearing this really detailed floral look with floral headpiece and she wore really skinny eyebrows. And there was an article published on L.com saying that she was appropriating Chola aesthetics because of those eyebrows. 
And as a viewer, you know, and as somebody who's really into fashion and aesthetics, I did not associate that with cholas at all. It was a very 1920s look, the whole thing for me. You know, like the look that Gaga had in A Star is Born, the first time we see her performing La Vie en Rose. Like that, that's what it was for me. But look, I could have been wrong. And um, Latina women, a few of whom I interacted with, saw it differently. And their argument was that Rihanna, because she's black and not Latina, would be judged less harshly for having that eyebrow look. Okay, let's just go to a quote. So the writer said, considering it was highly unlikely that Rihanna had suddenly joined a gang and seeing as the Caribbean singer wasn't exactly raised on the streets of East L.A., my Mexican-American heart was deeply confused and deeply annoyed. She writes, I guarantee had, say, J-Lo or Gina Rodriguez graced the cover of a magazine with pencil-thin eyebrows, they would have been ripped apart on the internet for looking like a girl from the hood at best or Chola at worst. To my Mexican and Mexican-American women, drawn-on eyebrows are a look historically representative of a marginalized culture, my culture, and have become a Latinx street style viewed as, quote, trashy by the rest of society. That's the end. Okay, girl. Girl, girl, girl. And this is where we have to be like, girl. First of all, if your argument rests on the black woman is not going to get it as bad as the Latina, mm, we got to really think about that. But also, British, British Vogue, in this case, again, said, uh, no, it, it wasn't Chola aesthetics. We're actually going back to the 1920s. Uh, here are our references. End of story. No, it was not the end of story there. Um, when I mentioned like, okay, they said that it's not that, it's this. I got into a little bit of a back and forth on Twitter with somebody who said, well, what's the likelihood that they had never seen Chola eyebrows before? And it's like, does that matter? I don't think it even matters. First of all, we're talking about British Vogue, not American Vogue. So I do think that there is a likelihood that they do not associate that look with cholas but also if we're talking about something that was originated in 1920 way before that aesthetic that you're talking about became popular what are we even arguing about what are you what what are we really trying to establish here ownership do you want to be compensated like what what is what is this fight for and i guess ultimately it's just a uh, it's a fight over territory. This is mine. This is not yours. This is where my culture ends. This is where yours begins. I, again, am not sure culture works like that. But, you know, whatever. And finally, I have to drag a bit the media outlets that reported on this Kendall Jenner story. You know, another one of my big issues with these conversations is not only are they a waste of emotional bandwidth for already marginalized people, but they are propping up these publications and black folks are not getting that money. Okay, so it's gross to see websites like Blavity, which is for black people, pushing that Kendall Jenner story saying that she's appropriating when we know that she is not mimicking black people. Why publish that story and amplify that story after the clarification has been made? Why do that? Oh, because outrage is popular, because outrage is lucrative. These Content farms disguised as publications are exploiting black rage. That's a problem. It is profitable 
to be woke. And that is the only reason why they're receiving this kind of coverage. When there are so many real outrages in the world, when there is so much that black people are fighting on so many different fronts, when we're already fatigued and overwhelmed, exploiting this stuff, trying to make a quick dollar off of these grievances is really gross and inexcusable. And I do feel like black people are being used and I just don't want to participate in that. Well, guys, that's all I have to say about that. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Become a patron on Patreon or give us a one-time donation. Grab some merch. Sign up for the email newsletter. Text 345-345 with the words for Harriet. That's all I have. Thank you, guys. Bye.